because their bacterial infection is resistant to existing antibiotics. It's estimated that at least 25,000 people a year are dying in Europe because of antibiotic resistant infections. 10 million deaths a year are predicted by 2050. Several human interventions have increased the speed that bacteria have become resistant to available antibiotics. Firstly, an alarming number of people have been given antibiotics by their doctor, or in some countries they can be bought from a local shop even though they didn't have a bacterial infection. One of the most common reasons people are prescribed and take antibiotics is to treat the common cold. Colds are viral and not bacterial illnesses and antibiotics will not have any effect. Secondly, in hospitals, poor hygiene has encouraged the spread of resistant bacteria. And thirdly, the use of antibiotics as growth promoters in agriculture have reduced the lifespan of existing antibiotics. Alongside all this, the pharmaceutical industry has not produced new antibiotic drugs for several decades. Consequently, doctors are left trying to treat more patients with infections resistant to available treatment. How can this be reduced? Global use of existing antibiotics has to be drastically reduced. Scientists and students at the University of Manchester are here to help. We run campaigns to educate people about antibiotic resistance. First, you can learn about basic hand hygiene to stop harmful bacteria spreading. Second, remember antibiotics cannot stop a cough or cold. And third, realise that antibiotic resistance is something each and every one of us can do something about. My name is Angela Spencer and I'm a lecturer on the Masters in Public Health at the University of Manchester. Molecular pathology is the study of molecules in disease. Molecules might be things like DNA and proteins. At the Manchester Molecular Pathology Innovation Centre, we are working to discover new biomarkers and turn these into clinically usable tests that will improve and speed up the process of diagnosing, predicting and identifying the best treatment for diseases in question. A biomarker is a biological molecule found in blood, other bodily fluids or tissues that is a sign of a normal or abnormal process or of a condition or disease. A biomarker can be used to see how well the body responds to a treatment for a disease or condition. In this way, a biomarker acts like a highlighter. You have probably given a biological sample for testing when visiting the doctor at some point in your life. For example, you may have provided a urine sample for testing glucose levels, so your doctor or nurse can tell if you might be suffering from diabetes. Glucose is a very common biomarker for diabetes. Through measuring this biomarker, Doctors can put patients into groups who might have diabetes and those who do not have diabetes, those who have more highlights versus those who have less. Just as one size of clothing doesn't fit every person, not all treatments are beneficial to every patient. Precision medicine is an approach to treating patients through categorising them into groups based on their risks of having a particular disease or how likely they are to respond to a particular drug or therapy. By looking at what highlights are present, doctors are able to better determine which treatment is needed. It is important that the correct tests are available that can identify which individuals fit into which groups, depending on their exact disease type and likely response to particular treatments. It's like developing a new, ultra-specific highlighter which can be used to highlight a specific disease marker. At the Manchester Molecular Pathology Innovation Centre, we are looking to discover new biomarkers so that we can create new clinical tests. We hope that we can find simple and effective tests for diseases which will give doctors powerful new tools for better diagnosing patients. We are the Manchester Molecular Pathology Innovation Centre at the University of Manchester. Biological timing is a central feature of all living things. Humans, plants, animals, insects, even single-celled life forms are all driven by this natural internal process. It helps us in all life forms to keep track of time passing and by doing this we can keep ourselves alive by doing things like eating and sleeping at the right times. It also allows us to change ourselves in response to changes in the world around us. This ability helps us to stay alive longer and to be as healthy as possible. This ability to track time comes from within us, from our body's biological clock or body clock which helps
Right, mics are on, lovely. Thank you. <laughs> right, well, welcome everyone. It's so nice to welcome you in this massive lecture theatre and anybody who's in the spillover lecture theatre and lecture theatre A as well. Uh, we're here to talk about the biosciences today and biological sciences. So if any of you have come for anything else, you're allowed to sneak out now and we'll pretend we haven't seen you, okay? Um, there are two of us delivering this talk. Uh, my name is Dr. Ruth Grady. I am one of the two academic admissions officers that we have in our school. Uh, the other one is Dr. Shazir Chowdhury, who is here. I'm a senior lecturer in microbiology, and Shazir is a senior lecturer in molecular cell biology. Uh, hello. Yeah, hello. hello. Uh, and between the two of us, we're going to do the talk. So I'm going to start off, and then Shazir is going to come back and tell you about the, how we organise the courses. Um, and you know, the differences between them, and why you might choose one over the other. Uh, slightly. So thank you, Shazir. So we're, now we're happy to take questions at the end. We're not expecting to speak for the full hour, but bearing in mind we both are lecturers and we've got a microphone in front of us and a captive audience, so we will try to keep to time. Uh, so we will take questions at the end. Now, generally, because there are other people in a different lecture theatre, we'll take those questions over in the Michael Smith building where we have our stands um, and ambassadors there as well. So we, we'll move over there and we're happy to take uh, individual questions from you. And there are other people who can answer the questions as well. The Michael Smith building is, um, I should be able to tell you what number it is on the map, but I can't. But let's just say it's got a big picture of DNA on the side. So, so you really uh, can't miss it. So I'm going to start talking about what are the biological sciences to interest you in the subject and think, yep, this is why I want to do bioscience and say not a, a different subject. Um, and then we're going to think about what you look for in a course, so the flexibility of our courses, field courses and placements, etc. Shazir will talk about that. Uh, and then I'll talk about entry requirements, and then a little bit about what you can do with a biological sciences uh, degree. So our definition of biological sciences is any study that contributes to the understanding of life processes. So it's quite a simple definition, if you like. Um, other places will give it a different title. So they'll call it life sciences or biomolecular uh, or biomedical sciences. Uh, and it can be quite daunting as to which you know, course you go for, because are they essentially all the same thing or are they different? I mean, here in Manchester, you can actually choose 16 different degree programmes. Uh, some have wider appeal than others. Uh, for instance, how many sitting in the audience here, um, I'm talking about the applicants here, not the parents, so you can join in if you want to. How, how many people are thinking maybe biomedical sciences is something you're interested in? Yep, there's a few of those. That's our most popular degree program, actually. Um, what about biochemistry? Yep, that's, that's a pretty popular one too. Um, what about medical physiology? Yeah, less, less for that one. But it really doesn't matter, uh, as Shazir is going to tell you. We have, uh, you know, a common first year. So which degree programme you actually go for, uh, as you'll find out during this talk, isn't too much of, of, a, of a problem. When you're on your UCAS form, uh, if you want to study any of the biosciences, any of these 16 degree programmes, you only have to put us down once. Okay, and if you put us down once for any of these degree programmes, once we've looked at your application, et cetera, et cetera, um, we will then um, invite you up for an offer holder day and we can talk more nuanced as to which one you might want to go for. If you want to understand the actual differences between the degree programmes, you know, why biochemistry as opposed to medical biochemistry, we really recommend you look at our website that has a drop-down menus of which units you can do in first year, which ones are optional, which ones are compulsory, and especially in second year and final year, because that, that is where, you know, the devil is in the detail, and that's what, what you need to look at. So you can either look at that and or come over to um, the Michael Smith building and talk to students who are doing those degree programmes at the moment and members of staff, so you can have a chat with them about the different... Uh, well, ones to do. So why would you want to study biosciences? Well, it's a really interesting subject in its own right. You see lots of super cool things which are really nice and really interesting. We all love a bit of David Attenborough, don't we? Why wouldn't you want to study the biosciences? But in addition to studying the biosciences, we want to educate our students so that they can help to answer global, unanswered big questions to help the world. So we want to understand the world around us. You want to understand what's there, you know, what's at the bottom of the ocean? Do we know? Do we know everything that's there? Are there any new species, new um, organisms to find? 
We also want to think about feeding the global population. Uh, and we know with global climate change, this is going to get more difficult. So we want to think about food security. So that's some topics that may have drawn you in to the biosciences. Other people may be more interested in, in humans, human life and development. So what makes us healthy? How are we healthy? How do we develop? How can we grow new body parts? Some animals can do this. We know that uh, salamanders can. Uh, if you amputate a limb there, then within a month, they will have regrown a new limb, stem cell sent to the area, they will differentiate into a limb, and they can walk again. We can't do that. So we want to you know, study you know, other organisms to find out how we can make ourselves healthy. We're also very interested uh, when things go wrong, say in the brain, neurodegenerative diseases. Um, you know, so we're studying those kind of issues. Of course, any other disease, infectious diseases, whether they're bacterial or viral, etc., or whether they're genetic diseases, uh, we're very interested in studying these. You know, we know inflammation is really important. So we, we have a lot of uh, groups here looking at inflammation. Cancer, of course, you know, are we ever going to be able to cure all cancers? And also new treatments and new diagnostics, imaging, etc. And everything that comes into disease. So these are all the big reasons why you may want to study biosciences. And in particular, what we feel here in Manchester, one really, really important thing we need to do is to prepare you for unknown problems. So we want you to be able to take your place alongside other scientists, engineers, um, uh, there's an economics aspect to this as well, there'll be a political answer to. So to work in multidisciplinary teams with your expertise to help solve global problems. And we think here in Manchester, we have a social responsibility to do this as well. You know, we have to take our place on, this, on the stage. We are educated. We want to help educate other people so we can take things forward for everybody. So we really, really recommend that you look at our research pages. Now, we're a research-intensive university, uh, and that is evidenced by our excellence um, performance in the recent research excellence uh, assessment. And you can look at that on our web pages if, if you're interested in how we actually did. We did very well. Uh, but if you look at the research pages uh, and spend an afternoon, spend a day going down, there's lots of rabbit holes you can go down because there's loads of really, really good research that we do here. And the University of Manchester as a whole has selected several different topics that they've called research beacons because we know these are really important for the future. And lots of these research beacons are centred in the biosciences. For instance, one of them is about cancer. We have a cancer research centre here. And this is um, a, a partnership between the University of Manchester, so our faculty, our school here at the university, alongside the Cancer Research UK charity, which is the world's largest cancer research charity, and also an NHS hospital, the Christie Hospital in South Manchester. So we have the expertise here from the patient side and from the research uh, side. So if you're interested in working in cancer research, you know, you can come to the University of Manchester and as an undergraduate, you can start to learn things, you know, about the cell cycle, for instance. We know that cancer is uncontrolled cell growth. So we look at the normal cell cycle. How do cells signal to each other? What happens when that gets disrupted? Uh, you know, how, how do cells um, start growing uncontrollably uh, when the processes break down? And what happens when those cancer cells start to migrate around the body? So we're looking at imaging techniques. We're looking at computer modelling. So all aspects of cancer research is, is something that we would uh, look at in our undergraduate curriculum. And it, it's, it's really, really important for us. The other thing that's really important is biotechnology. This is one of our research beacons again. We're at the forefront of a bioindustrial revolution. You know, we can't rely on fossil fuels for the future. Are there any other solutions that are mired in or steeped in the biosciences? So we have lots of research groups looking at this kind of uh, activity. And one thing we have here in our school, people are looking at uh, you know, plants and thinking about, well, if we want to uh, control food for the future, can we grow plants that are bigger and with bigger leaves so they have a bigger biomass so they're going to be more useful to us? You know, so we have research groups looking at that kind of thing as well. And here in Manchester, we have the... Um, uh, the Environmental Research Institute, MERI. This takes expertise from across the university, uh, and it's people who are interested in things like, in, in our faculty, in fish. 
Uh, so if we know that uh, sea temperatures are going to rise, then those migratory fish that always go to the same place to spawn, are they going to have reproductive success if temperatures rise? You know, so we have bioscientists looking at that kind of thing as well for the environment. Now, I don't know whether some of you saw one of the little videos that was going on as you, as you came in, but one of them was about biological timing. And the University of Manchester has the largest body clocks biological timing research community in Europe. Now, if you're not sure what biological timing means or biological clocks, um, we used to call it circadian rhythms. Uh, and this is how organisms track the passage of time and so that you, you know, we can adapt our biology accordingly. So this is, you know, why is it that we... Uh, you know, our blood pressure drops at certain times of the day. You know, why is it that hormones are pumped out at certain times of the day? You know, we know body clocks are really, really important for health because if your body clocks are disrupted, we know from animal studies and we know from patients that that can lead to chronic disease. And it could be whole body disease like you know, diabetes and obesity. Uh, or it could be um, organ-specific. So it could be, um, you know, things like cardiovascular diseases or, or, or cancers of certain organs. So we know studying body clocks is really, really important. And all of these other groups that are mentioned here on, on the slide, so the Regenerative Medicine Network, uh, the uh, Cell Matrix Research uh, Centre, all of these groups of researchers are really interested in, in thinking about how we can repair or how we can replace or regenerate dam damaged tissue. And if you look at the research groupings, if you know any organ in the body, there'll be somebody here in Manchester that's researching it. So whether it's about uh, the liver, the kidneys, the eye, uh, the lungs, the research is being done here. And of course, those researchers, uh, some of those will be the lecturers that are going to be teaching you here in Manchester. Just to uh, look at something that's slightly different, uh, you may be drawn into the biosciences because you're interested in the social context of uh, science research. research. And our Centre for Historical Study of Science, Technology and Medicine, or CHISTEM, as it's called, um, is a grouping of uh, people who are interested in science, in the, in the history of science, and then medical humanities and science communication. So we're looking at how, why are we doing science the way we do it? You know, where have we come from and what can we learn from the past to take it into the future? We're looking at ethics. Just because we can, should we be doing it? We're looking at science policy. Who are the science policy makers of the future? You know, so we need to think you know, um, responsibly about what we're doing. So as an undergraduate here, you will all have access to doing units that are run by Chistem, and they give a very nice accompaniment to you know, the hardcore biochemistry units that you may be doing as well, because that kind of social context of science is really, really important. So, as I said, other diseases, I mean, I could go on for hours talking about different diseases. I'm not going to, because I've got to pass on to Shazir, um, because she wants to take the talking stick <laughs> and, and get going. Um, but thinking about you know, inflammation, our arthritis research centre is here. Um, Alzheimer's uh, research is really important here, too. We have the Manchester Brain Bank, which collects and supplies human brain tissues that can be used locally here for research, and they're also exported internationally uh, as well. Of course, we're very interested in um, all sorts of diseases. Our Lydia Beckett Institute of Immunology and Inflammation brings researchers from all over the university who are looking at new diagnostics, new treatments, and thinking about new diseases, whether they're fungal or from parasites or, or viral diseases or bacterial. So, so the whole uh, spectrum is researched here. So I hope I managed to convince you that the biosciences are a worthwhile subject to do, and it's something that you can study here in Manchester very easily because we've got huge areas of research expertise. I'm going to pass you on to Shazir now, and she's going to show you how we organise our courses and how we select our students. Okay. Thank you, Ruth. Let's move forward. OK, so let's talk practicalities in terms of how our courses work. As Ruth said, we are a large research-intensive university, and our, but that's great. Our size means we can offer choice and flexibility. We have the capability of teaching many diverse courses as we've got over 300 academic staff, so they can deliver content that they're passionate about and invested in. So as shown here, we can take uh, up to 700, it says 655, but 700 students. And currently we have no caps on degree programs. Though it'd be quite a challenge 
if you all wanted to do say zoology yeah, in one year. This is, um, I mean, the lecturers that teach the disciplines are experts in that field. And they are world leading published researchers and teaching specialists in the biosciences. And this is good because I'm a cell biologist, so I get to teach things that really interest me, such as how cells make organs and how uh, and cell membranes themselves. And then rather than on, say, bacteria that cause awful diseases, so for that we have Ruth and a fellow microbiologist of which we are most grateful. Okay, so in terms of our degree programmes, the degree, degree programmes all have a... You might have uh, noticed this if you've looked on the website. They all have a common first year so that everyone gets a solid grounding in all bioscience uh, areas. And we think this broad training is essential to develop modern uh, biologists. You know, we want you to be flexible, open-minded, and work in multidisciplinary teams. And it might be that your heart is uh, in neuroscience, and you may want to bag yourself as a neuroscientist on that program, but you're going to need a good working knowledge of molecular uh, biology and pharmacology uh, too. It is possible to switch degree disciplines between the 16 programs. Um, and you can do this at the end of year one or two. And that can be, you might change your mind and you might develop an interest that wasn't there previously. Interestingly, last year, over 25% of our students did change degree program. So they went from either a broad degree program to a specialized one, or they, went, or they did it the other way uh, around. Our content becomes more specialised in year two and three. So you really get a chance to get to the cutting edge of the subject by the time you graduate. OK. So in terms of our degree programmes uh, as well, I mean, we say you can change programmes. There's those uh, terms and conditions that may apply. So as you can see here, cognitive neuroscience and psychology. So if you start on Cognero, then you can't change on or off it because it's jointly run with the Department of Psychology, because you're going to be taking units that aren't available to other programmes. Now, if you want to switch to biochemistry, medical biochemistry and molecular biology, then you need to have done some chemistry in year one. And that's because these units are compulsory uh, if you start uh, on those uh, programmes. We recommend you go and talk to the students in the Smith Building or look at our website to see about the detailed variations between the degree programmes, i.e. what units are compulsory and which are optional. OK, now, our programme, our University of Manchester Bioscience courses can be studied in a variety of pathways. So you'll all know about the three-year BSc option, but we can also offer it with some other <coughs> options shown here. So in terms of with the modern language, might be something you want to consider. So these, this uh, particular degree includes a year spent conducting research in a research institute or university in a country where the language you are studying is spoken. So we offer French, uh, German, Italian, Spanish, Japanese or Mandarin. Now you need an A level in the language for European languages, but language capability if Mandarin or Japanese. The placement year takes place between the second year and the final year, so you get to improve your language skills before completing the course. So you can also do with entrepreneurship, uh, as shown. So you might want to improve your employability by taking with entrepreneurship. So here, you will combine um, key biology units as well as studying additional units as well. So the additional units... They could be in management skills, finance, and business innovation. Two-thirds of the course is biological sciences and one-third entrepreneurship. And these are delivered by academics from the business school. And then thereafter, this degree also includes a year in industry uh, as well. So with industrial uh, experience, you can also choose to spend the third year uh, degree on placement in one of our partner organisations in the UK overseas. We've got over 100 different partner organisations. So we find the placement for you and we make sure that all placements provide some degree of research. 
The placements provide really valuable work experience that will help you clarify your career objectives and it will give you an advantage in today's very competitive uh, employment market. And employers do like to see work experience as well. Okay, so here you can see a map of some of our placements. You can see a nice cluster around the UK and EU, so we've got loads there. Um, and, then, and then there's a board. Now, some are paid opportunities and some are just for the experience. Uh, the paid ones, so we've got a really nice one in the Mayo Clinic. It's quite near a beach in Florida, in Jacksonville. Uh, and that pays 26000 uh, a year, uh, or for the placement. And the UK pharmaceutical companies can pay sixteen uh, to 20000 Okay, now, we also offer the integrated uh, masters uh, as well. So this is where your placement year takes place after the third year and is, one of the research, is in one of the research laboratories in Manchester. So you're going to conduct a full year of research and we are able to offer a master's level degree. We'd really recommend this if you're thinking of a PhD after. Now, you can switch between the three-year BSc, between the IE and MSI at the end of year one and two, but you can't switch between with modern language and with entrepreneurship. So if you're thinking about those, take them uh, at the start. Do remember, continuation on any of the four-year programmes uh, is subject to academic performance whilst you are here, but the entry requirements uh, are the same uh, for the standard uh, degree. And then we also offer lots of popular field courses that are compulsory for degree programmes such as uh, zoology. So you could spend 10 days uh, in Costa Rica looking at frogs and butterflies. It's very popular in the rainforest. Um, we do urban diversity in the canals and streams around Manchester. Uh, plants and orchids in Mallorca. And animal behaviour in South Africa. We've got a new field course starting in Malaysia too. There's a cost implication for most of them, but some are free and all are subsidised. These are compulsory for zoology, but options for life sciences and biology. So that might be a reason why you want to pick those programmes. I'll pack, pass you back to Ruth, who will talk about the application process. Thank you, she so. So, for the whole um, application cycle, some people will have a deadline of October, and that's if you are applying as well for, um, you know, medicine, veterinary, dentistry, or Oxbridge. Uh, for most of you, your uh, deadline will be uh, the following January, so that's, you know, qu quite a long time for you to make up uh, your mind. Um, by January, we'd expect over 7,000 applications here to the, um, our school for all these our degree programmes, of which, as Shazir said, we're looking for around about 700, between 650 uh, and 700. Uh, so how, how do we select? Uh, so we get your UCAS application. Uh, you know, uh, we do look at your um, statements. I'll talk about your personal statement in a moment. We're really um, very interested in your prior academic performance, so we, we check uh, GCSEs and your predicted grades that your school or college have given you, or if you're coming in with grades that you've already received. So that, that's what we're interested in giving you um, an offer based on your predicted grades. Now, are we looking for anything in particular on the personal statements? Well, for these uh, 16 degree um, degrees, we're not looking for anything in particular. We don't have a checklist where we're saying, oh, have you done this, have you done that, yes or no. What we're looking for is motivation. Do you, do you sound like you are interested in this course? You know, tell us about any extra reading you've done or a book that you've read. You know, uh, and, and so then think, oh yeah, you know what this course is all about. So we're, we're looking for enthusiasm. <coughs> Work experience is great, so put that on your statement if, if you've done it. Um, for the biosciences, it, you know, if, whether it's work experience in science or it's work experience as in you know, you're a dog walker or you're working in a shop, it's all fine. Work experience is great. But you don't have to have it. It's not going to be uh, something that we are going to judge your application on as to how much work experience you've got. EPQs, if you're doing one, are great. They're a really good experience for you to think about a subject that really you're, you're, you feel passionate about and it's come from you. And those research skills you get from doing an EPQ are really, really valuable from when you come here in Manchester. However, it's not going to be part of a formal offer 
for Manchester. It may come into play on results day, which I'll talk about in a moment, but we just think it's a good thing to do and it's, it's great that, that if you do one. And if your personal statement is very much tailored towards medicine or dentistry uh, or, or something like that, because you have to write them very much tailored, don't worry about that. We can extract the information we need um, as to your suitability to do a bioscience course from whatever personal statement uh, you put in, as long as there's, there's, there's something biological there and it makes it sound like you're interested in, in the sciences. So our offers... Uh, the highest offer we give is A star AA, uh, the lowest is ABB, and as I say, it includes two sciences that we're interested in. We will base it on your predicted grades. Uh, now, you may think that can sound quite um, unfair, but I'll, I'll come, on, come on to this in a, in a moment. We'd accept geography, psychology, environmental studies, or PE in place of one of the core sciences, but you would need to get an A in it. Uh, if you've done non-science A-levels or you haven't done enough science A-levels, we'd be thinking about a foundation year offer. Uh, and that foundation year offer is where you then spend a year looking at biology, chemistry and maths in a year programme uh, that is delivered by one of our partner um, further education colleges. Okay, so when we're giving you an offer based on your predicted grades, one of the reasons why we give these differential offers is because we want you to hit your potential. So if your school or college think you're able to get A's or A stars, we want you to get that as well. Because we know that after university, when you're applying for some jobs, not, not all jobs, but there are some occupations that do look at your A-level grades. Uh, so if that is the case and you're going to go into one of those uh, companies, then we don't want you to take the foot off the pedal and think, oh, I only, I only need to get a B in that subject, so I don't need to try on that 25 marker question as much as, as I would have done. So we want you to be working at your capacity so you get the grades that you deserve. Of course, it does mean that if you've been given one of our highest offers, if you then make drop a grade or maybe drop a grade or two, if we have room on our course, we will um, you know, perhaps be able to give you an offer. Now, I'm not talking about the COVID years, but prior to that, we have always been able to accommodate people who dropped a grade or two. We can't guarantee you a place, though, okay? So the only way you can guarantee on getting in is if you fulfill the um, offer we've given you based on your predicted grades. But that's, that's the reason why, you know, we give a high grade because we want you to reach that potential. That also means when you arrive here in September, October, you know, you're used to working hard, you're used to, you've covered all the syllabus, you know it all, and then when you start here, you, you know, you can enjoy... Uh, looking at those subjects at a higher level, knowing that you've got a good bank of knowledge behind you to get going. Now, I, I'm not sure whether you know this about the results, is that we actually get them, you, you get your results on the Thursday, uh, we actually get the results on the Sunday. So we spend a fun Sunday um, with all, all the marks in, usually with some pizza, no beer. Um, we have to have some pizza and, you know, we, we look at the grades and we think, well, all these people have made their offer right there in. All these people haven't made their offer, but they've only dropped one grade and they've still got really good grades. Yeah, OK, you're in too. Have we got enough room? And that, that's, that's what we do. So we will make decisions if you've dropped some grades, whether we're going to take you or not. Or at that point, we could offer a foundation you offer to. So if maybe you've only done one or two sciences and you've dropped some grades, at that point we may give you an offer for the foundation year if you're interested in it. And when, if you apply to us on uh, any of your choices, we will invite you up to Manchester for one of our offer holder um, act sessions. And these, these take place on Wednesdays um, through March and... Um, yeah, when are they going to happen? March and April next year. Uh, and we take you on tours round, and uh, you'll be able to see in the laboratories, uh, you'll be able to see all the buildings we've got, go inside them, uh, and you'll be able to talk to an ambassador and get some really good insight into, you know, maybe you want to go for medical biochemistry rather than biochemistry. So we can uh, adjust your offer for the degree programme at that point as well. So I'll just briefly say how we're doing the teaching here in Manchester and what a typical week looks like. Of course, this is what we think a typical week looks like. For the real information, you need to talk to the uh, ambassadors. Um, and you're looking here at a, a blended approach of lectures, practicals, tutorials, some of which will be um, online, some of the lectures as pre-recorded material, uh, some of them will be in person in, in, in uh, uh, 
lecture rooms like this one. So big lecture theatres, somebody at the front talking, you can socialise with other people on the course, go out for coffee afterwards. Um, and over, the, over your whole course, so over the whole three or whole four years, we're looking for around about 50-50 blended online and in person. Some subjects lend themselves to be in person. So when we can do them in person and we want to do them in person, because that's the fun bit, talking to students, seeing students, we'll do that. If it's a bit more computer-based, you know, you're looking at programming, etc., we can offer those as pre-recorded material. We know that students like that. They like being able to do things online from home, and then they like to be able to come in as well and ask questions and get face-to-face -face tuition. So we're looking around about 10 hours of directed teaching via lectures, you know, around about five hours of practicals, whether they're online resources to support what you do in, in, in the laboratories. Because we know by the end of second year, if you want to go on placement, or you're thinking of going into final year to do a laboratory project, you need those research skills, those hands-on skills on how to use the equipment uh, and, and how to run an experiment. So by the end of second year, you will have all the skills necessary to go comfortably on placement or into our final year to do a lab project. Uh, tutorials are good fun. Uh, this will, again, depend on what um, degree programme you're in. Your tutor will be from that degree discipline. Uh, so this may be a reason why you want to go for one of the more narrow degree programmes. Because, say, for instance, if you want to do microbiology and you're interested in microbiology, your tutor group will be you, nine other students, roughly. You meet round about once a week with a microbiologist. And this is where we look at writing essays and giving presentations and, and, and all those skills that you need to be able to tackle the lecture content that you're doing in, in your modules. Whereas, you know, if you're coming for biomedical sciences, it may be that your tutor will be from any of the biomedical science d disciplines. So they could be a microbiologist like me, or they could be a physiologist, or they could be a biochemist. You know, so you get more of a range of tutor, which may suit you, or it may not. We're expecting you to put in about 20 hours of self-study as well as the directed teaching that we're giving you. So we're telling you to do things at certain times in the week and then 20 hours you doing your own work as well in the libraries or in, in your um, halls of residence or wherever it is you want to study. So again, I, I do recommend the ambassadors to talk to them because they can give you a real flavour of what a week is like here in Manchester. So I'm going to finish off in the last uh, couple of slides thinking about careers. For those of you who didn't get to go to the uh, careers talk, we can't have a science presentation without a pie chart or a graph of, of some kind. So here's a pie chart of where our um, graduates have gone to um, in the last few years. And you can see a massive big chunk is in blue, 36%. These are people who've gone on to non-bioscience careers. So they've taken the skills that they've learnt um, here, it's whether it's you know, writing essays, looking at complex information and being able to analyse and solve problems, uh, you know, being able to write a report, so literacy skills, numerical skills, etc. Taking those skills and they are going to be used by employers in big multinationals. So it doesn't matter what the degree discipline was, you know, it could have been biochemistry, it could have been neuroscience, it doesn't matter. What the employees are interested in is people who they can train to do the job because they've got all the skills necessary coming in. And we know a third of our cohort graduates will go on to that kind of, of job, so straight into you know, working for the civil service or management recruitment, that kind of thing. We know some students, 3% uh, here, will go on to postgraduate study in a non-bioscience subject, so maybe they'll do law or something like that. So that means most of our students do carry on with their biological knowledge. So the purple screen on the left-hand side, 35% will go on to further study in the biosciences. So if you want to do research in biosciences, you will have to do a master's and probably a PhD as well. So a lot of people will go on to do that extra study. 14% will go off into working in a pharmaceutical company or working in a lab, maybe in hospital medicine as, as a technician or something. So they will carry on. And this is where they need the biological skills that we've given them here, as well as the transferable skills. About 5% will go off into teaching. So whether that's teach first in primary or secondary schools or colleges, or go on and do a PGCE. And that leaves the remaining 6% will go off to do uh, medicine afterwards. So either a four-year uh, postgraduate medicine course or the full five years of a medicine course. So that these, these are the bioscience careers. So, so scientific research for which you probably will need a master's or, and a PhD. Or clinical or technical roles in a hospital or a pharmaceutical company. 
And of course, some people don't want to be in a lab. They want to be in research, but they want to be in the field. So they'll go off and work in uh, conservation. Uh, we've had people go off and working in, in uh, 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 sloth co um, communities um, and also animals in, in, in America and things. So people go off and do all sorts of lovely conservation jobs. And a lot of people are interested in science communication. So they want to write for medical uh, writing companies. Uh, that's a good recruiter, actually, for bioscience students. And some people are interested in sales. They know the technology uh, and they want to go off and, 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 and sell pieces of equipment to people. Um, and that's, you know, you need a, a good technical understanding of what these equipments are. So a lot of people will go off into those kind of studies too, uh, uh, careers too. Now, to help you get the career that you want, we have a really, really good career service. It's been voted the best UK university career service for the last few years. Um, it has very good drop-in sessions, face-to-face -face and online. People will look at your CV and make sure it's you know, suitable for the, for the industry that you're going into. They'll do mock interviews for you as well if you've not had that kind of experience. And we know that graduate recruiters want to recruit University of Manchester students. They like our graduates. They know they've got the skills necessary. So we are the top UK university for graduate employability. Uh, so you know you're in good hands here. We'll give you lots of lovely research to look at, lots of lovely teaching and interesting modules, and then afterwards we will help you get to where you want to be um, because of our, our career service. So you can look at that online now if you want to. You, know, you don't have to be registered at the University of Manchester to look at our career service website, and you can see the um, vast array of things they have on offer that can help you. So the next steps now, we're going to finish uh, talking. Um, as I say, we'll take questions. We'll walk over, myself and Shazia, over to the Michael Smith building and we'll take questions over there so we can clear the lecture theatres uh, for the ne next talks. Do go on a campus tour if you can, whilst you're here. It's very useful to see where everything is and all the lovely research and teaching buildings we have. And we do recommend you look at our course web pages. If you have any questions that you can't come over and ask us now, do contact our website, which is at ug.biosciences, and our admissions team will take all questions for you. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.